What happens when a company sends you not just a laser, but the entire ecosystem? We received the Tuca L220 watt laser, but unlike any other review you've seen, we've got the complete package. The smoke purifier, the camera, the air assist, the rotary tool, and even a box of special materials. It arrived in four separate shipments over two weeks, and today we are taking you through the full unfiltered experience. We'll show you a simple trick with the packaging that dramatically improves safety and performance, 3D print some essential upgrades, and of course, we make some awesome projects. I'm Gergo, and this is Gergo Print 3D, the YouTube channel where my little nephew Levi and I share all the adventures we have with our 3D printers, laser machines, and other awesome DIY tools. Just like our earlier videos, this one has curated, translation-ready subtitles, chapter markers, and audio tracks in more than 20 languages. And now even my native Hungarian using my own voice, all to give you the best experience. This all started when our friends at Tuca reached out and offered to send their L220 watt laser for a review. I explained that for our family-oriented channel, we need a complete and safe setup. To my surprise, they immediately agreed to send not just the laser, but the full kit. The smoke purifier, the camera, the air assist, and even the rotary roller for a future video. This is fantastic because it allows us to show you the complete real-world user experience. If you're thinking about getting one, Tuca has all these options on their website using our affiliate links in the description. Help support the channel at no extra cost to you, and we really appreciate it. Now, the unboxing was an adventure in itself. It was a staggered delivery over two weeks. First to arrive were the smoke purifier and the honeycomb bed. The purifier is a serious piece of kit, and we'll test its noise levels and effectiveness later in this video. The honeycomb, however, was a bit of a puzzle. It's 360 by 360 millimeters for a machine with a 400 by 400 millimeter work area. I ended up swapping it for a true 400 by 400 I already had. The next day, the magic box of materials arrived, including some very cool dual color ABS sheet. And the day after that, the main event, the base machine with the 20 watt laser module. I was able to get it assembled, but I had to wait another nine days for the final box with the air assist, the camera, and the rotary tool before I could really start testing. And now for my top tip, and it's something you can do for free. The L2 is enclosed, but the bottom has a two centimeter gap. To create a much better seal, I used the large foam sheet from the top of the packaging. It perfectly matches the footprint of the device. Here's how you do it. First, align the foam with the device. One side is slightly longer. Press the machine down firmly to leave marks from the feet in the foam. Then, using a long, thin, sharp knife, carefully cut out the four holes for the feet. Next, we need a cutout for the honeycomb bed to lock it in place. Move the tool head to its home position in the back left. Align the corner of your honeycomb bed with the laser nozzle, and then cut the foam around it. This not only seals the bottom, but also ensures your bed is always in the exact same spot, perfect for repeatable projects. This simple trick makes the enclosure incredibly well sealed. In fact, it's so effective, it leads to our next challenge. If you think that was a cool out-of-the-box improvement, quite literally, please upgrade this video with a click in the like button. It's a huge help. Thank you so much. With the foam in place, I connected the powerful smoke purifier. A quick tip, when using the external purifier, keep the laser's built-in exhaust fan turned off. The seal was now so strong that the air assist pump started making a high-pitched sound. It was struggling to pull air into the vacuum in the device. This could damage the pump over time. The solution is easy. 
it was to create a dedicated air intake in the front of the enclosure. I designed and 3D printed this small 30 millimeter wide, 3 millimeter tall vent that slides between the foam and the frame at the center. I also recommend running the purifier at a lower fan speed, as low as 15%, which is more than sufficient for wood. For the vent hose, Tuka provides a 4 inch 100 millimeter diameter hose with both the laser and the purifier, so you're actually getting two of those hoses. To make connecting and disconnecting easier without tools, I designed this friction fit coupler that slides right into the purifier's intake. All these 3D printable upgrades, the intake piece, this coupler, and some cable clips and honeycomb bed pins we'll see later, are available in a single project on my Cause 3D page, link below. Let's talk cables. The included USB-C cable is very short. If you want your computer on the other side like I do, we'll have to get a longer cable. Remember, the camera has its own cable too, so you might need a USB hub if you're using a laptop. Alternatively, you can use a TF card or connect via Wi-Fi, which is great, but sadly the camera doesn't work over Wi-Fi. For camera cable management, the included self-adhesive guides work pretty well. Many have complained about the multiple power supplies and they are right. It would be great if the air assist and smoke purifier could be powered by the main unit. To simplify things, I'm using a switchable power strip from AliExpress for the air assist and purifier. But I have bigger plans. I'm going to automate this with a photocell that detects when the tool head leaves its home position and uses a relay to turn the pumps on automatically. I've already ordered the parts from AliExpress and I'll implement this mod in a follow-up video. If you want to get a head start on this project, I've dropped links to all the inexpensive components I ordered. A photocell to detect whether the laser head is homed, a 25 amp DC to AC relay, a pair of power sockets to plug the pumps into, an HY 2.0 four pin male plug so we can get 24 volts from the second EXT port for the photocell, and some double sided tape to attach everything. Knowing ourselves, we'll likely 3D print a case to bring the sockets, the relay into a single compact unit. Stay tuned for that project in an upcoming video. The air assist works wonderfully. With it on, there are almost no scorch marks or smoke staining. For tube management, I fed the tube through the hole at the back and used some 3D printed clips to attach it to the main umbilical cable. The smoke extraction is also top notch. With the purifier running, there's no smell of burning wood and only a faint smell even when cutting ABS. I even tested the purifier by connecting it to my Bamboo Lab printer while printing ASA and it eliminated the smell completely. Here are the noise levels I measured from one meter away. A 15% fan speed, which is plenty for wood, is a very reasonable 58 decibels. That's just 18 decibels higher than the baseline for my apartment. I'll put the rest of the measurements up on the screen for you. For software, we have two choices. Light burn, connect it instantly. As I mentioned, the camera doesn't work over Wi-Fi, so you can't use it with the Wi-Fi connection. Tuka, sadly, doesn't provide a material library for Lightburn, but I'm building my own as I test. Feel free to connect with me on Kofi.com, and I'll be happy to send you a link to my ever-updating library. Tuka Studio was a pleasant surprise. It's free and gets the job done. It has a limited but well-tested material library and a good clip art collection. The camera works, though turning it on is a bit hidden. A little tip, if you create an account, you won't need to recalibrate the camera every time, but you still have to go through the calibration menu item to activate it, which is a bit confusing. 
if there's a better way, we haven't found it yet. The app ran a bit slow on my eight-year-old laptop, but it's a solid, free, web-based option. The camera was easy to calibrate in Lightburn as a standard 5 megapixel lens, a stock fisheye, no hassle with dotted cards like with our previous lasers. It makes tracing and alignment perfect, as you can see from this contour cut test. We also did a couple of regular material tests directly in Lightburn. Nothing unexpected, engraving works well on wood, painted metal, and even tested these slate coasters. Tuka Studio had the settings in its library, and I created the same settings in Lightburn. Now for cutting. Like many 20 watt diode lasers, the L2 has a rectangular beam. This means it cuts stronger along one axis, the Y, than the other X. This isn't a flaw, just physics. The solution is simple, tune your speed and power to get a clean cut on the weaker X axis and the Y axis will cut through with no problem. First, we tried the test project from the manual on the supplied 3mm birch plywood. It's a great way to get a feel for the machine. You can carry out this test even before installing any software. Just insert the included TF card, place the material on the bed, set focus using the flip out arm, close the lid, frame the job by single pressing the multi-function button on the front of the device, Align your material to the highlighted area. Start your pumps and double press the same button to start this cute six minute multicolor engraving and cutting project. None of the smoke escaped and it could not be felt in the room, including a test project like this is a wonderful idea and a cool, quick, successful first impression of what our new device is capable of. Next, we use the red and white ABS from the Magic Material Box. Levy's idea was to create this particular sign. The little pins he's using to secure the board in place are also available in our 3D Prints project. We drew the design in Lightburn and used settings from Tuka Studio, which was very convenient as the power and speed for engraving have to be perfectly tuned to avoid any scorch marks on the white areas. As you can see, this red and white YouTube subscribe sign is turning out perfect. And speaking of which, if you want to see more projects like this, now would be a perfect time to actually subscribe to the channel while we watch it being engraved. What a hint. The funny thing is, Lightburn predicted the engraving would take 20 minutes, until we realized we had accidentally set it to two passes. Fortunately, I noticed the mistake in time and was able to stop the laser before it started the second pass. Speaking of us making mistakes so you don't have to, the combination of 300 millimeters per minute speed and 100% power didn't manage to cut through the plastic board. No worries though, we just ran the cut task again. You'll be able to cut it in a single pass if you just lower the speed to, let's say, 200 millimeters per minute. And be careful, every color in the magic box will require slightly different settings, all of which are available in Tuka Studio. This sign turned out great. We even 3D printed a stand for it on our Sovol SVO8. You can find the Lightburn project and the 3D model on Call 3D, along with the patterns for our final cut. This practical, wall-mountable remote control holder for a classroom at our church where we kept losing the remote for the projector. The finger joints came from boxes.py and I designed the rest. We cut it from 3.5 mm thick plywood. Levy loves our Hotto snap lock tools, the mini drill and the precision screwdriver. We have linked to both in the description below, be sure to use our coupon codes for a nice 15-20% discount. But I guess you're more curious about the Tuka L2 now. What's our final verdict? There is so much to love. 
the fit and finish are exceptional. The motion system is tight and quiet and the happy jingles and the color bar on the front are both nice touches. The interior is spacious and well lit and with our foam upgrade, it's perfectly sealed. The built-in safety features from the double laser protection, triple if you even use the included glasses, door, tilt, and flame sensors to the child lock are all top tier. There are just a few things that could be improved. If I'm really nitpicking, while the internal cable management is exemplary, it's in stark contrast to the external cable situation, which feels like an afterthought. The lack of software control for the air assist is a missed opportunity, in my opinion. And the staggered chipping is just something to be aware of. Tuca has produced a complete, well-tuned, top-tier quality system. This is a phenomenal machine, especially when you have the complete package. We still have the 5-in-1 rotary tool to test, so that will be coming in a separate video very soon, along with that automatic power mod for the pumps. If you'd like to see more of our Sovol SVO8 and Bamboo H2 as the two printers we use for the various upgrades, check out this playlist and this video. With all these tools, we can not only go print 3D, but also laser cut. Thank you for watching another Gergo Print 3D video all the way to its end. Happy making.